any questions regarding the code that you have written so far? What, is, what are the new features of C Sharp and .NET 5 here? First, top level statements. We don't need a main method if we don't want to. Second feature, records. Third feature, if you want, here, the new without the typing, okay? Nothing special, nothing very complicated. I think so far we are good, right? Good. The next step, and I encourage you to follow along, is that we need a second method. A method with which we can find all the heroes whose last name is unknown. I don't know whether the real name of Homelander is really known. Join us. But I don't know it. So we'll just write a method here by copying the first one. Of course, it's a mistake. You should never copy code and change only a few lines. That's always an indicator that something is strange. But let's do that for a moment. So I will copy the entire filter heroes who can fly method. And it will change the name to filter heroes whose last name is unknown. Do we have to change the first line? No. Do we have to change the second line? No. Do we have to change the last line, uh, the next line? Yes, we have to. So we need to change that one from hero.canfly to string.is null or empty heroes.lastname. Ah, sorry, hero.lastname. Do we have to change the next name, ne next line? No. Do we have to change the last line here? No. So if we take a look at these two methods, let me zoom out a little bit. If we compare them, we will see that the only difference we have is here, this line of code. Let's keep that in mind. First, let's try it. Filter heroes whose last name is unknown. So you see, I now change that one to filter heroes whose last name is unknown, and then we should get back Homelander and Stormfront. Let's run it. And we get back Homelander and Stormfront. Homelander and Stormfront. So my question to you is, any ideas what we could change so that we only have a single method? I, I, I don't like that code. I really don't like the code because it doesn't make sense to have code that, is, that only differs in a single line. There has to be a better way of writing this code. Suggestions. What can we do? This is not an exam. You can even make stupid suggestions. Any suggestion is welcome. Yes, first question, uh, first suggestion. We could use what? Aware. Aware? This dot where, okay, this is link. We will work our way towards link. I don't want to use it yet. You are right, but I don't want, I don't want to use it yet. Yeah? A filter delegate, okay, good. Any other suggestion? The same thing, good. We create a delegate, I agree. Delegate, delegate what? Pool? Filter, something like this. And which parameters? Hero. Hero. Something like this? Yes. Do you agree? Good. Um, because of top level statements, I have to move it down a bit. I think it has to be below the two functions. I'm sorry, th this is how C Sharp works. Uh, I don't like it either that we have to put it here at the end of the code, but we have to. Good, I have a delegate. Now, what now? I like the idea, but now I have a delegate and, yep. 
Okay, so we use a chest that we make it a more generic function, something like filter heroes. We get a list of heroes and put the filter delegate here, right? Something like this? Yes, good. And? Uh huh. Here? Yeah, we do what? Exactly. We get the filter strategy as a parameter. So we define that we want to generically filter all heroes and the strategy which heroes to filter should be a parameter and that is a delegate. Got it? A delegate which returns a boolean and gets a data structure as a parameter is often referred to as a predicate. A predicate. If you hear predicate, that's often, that often means that you get that back. I always describe it like that and don't laugh at me. Yeah? It, it will stick to your mind, hopefully. People who don't understand what we are doing now, I, I always refer to, uh, to the, uh, how is it called in English? The Snow White Tale. I have to switch to German for a second. I'm unfortunately, I cannot do that in, in English. Uh, Aschenputtel. Is it Snow White? Uh, Aschenputtel is Cinderella. Cinderella. Thank you very much. So it's good that I switched to German. Um, Aschenputtel. Um, in, uh, in Deutsch. Uh, Aschenputtel sitzt da irgendwann in dieser Küche und da haben dann die bösen Schwestern, glaube ich, diese ganzen Körner am Boden ausgeschüttet und sie muss dann die guten und die schlechten voneinander trennen. Und was sie dann tut, sie hört die Tauben, glaube ich, rein und sagt, die Guten ins Töpfchen, die Schlechten ins Kröpfchen. Das ist das, was sie, glaube ich, sagt im Märchen. Und das ist eine Lambda-Funktion. Und das ist genau das, was wir da machen. Die Taube geht durch und sagt, Korn, gut, ja, nein. Wenn es gut ist, Töpfchen. Wenn es schlecht ist, Kröpfchen. Das ist eine Lambda-Funktion. Die Taube kriegt von uns ein Delegate, der heißt, if, gut, mach das, sonst mach was anderes. Und genau das haben wir da. Wir sagen ihm hier, here we give it a filter and that filter is generic. Yeah? We can somehow filter the heroes and we can from outside specify what the filter condition should be. That's the whole purpose of the delegate here. So with that, we can luckily get rid of the first method. We don't need it anymore because we have a much more generically usable function here. Let's use it here. Filter heroes here. And then we can add a filter implementation here. And here we can use a lambda function. H, like hero, h dot can fly. Now we are filtering those heroes who can fly. As an alternative, we could say h dot, uh, string dot is null or empty, h dot last name. Get it? We now have a single method and the strategy how to filter is passed in as a delegate. Your comment regarding the where function was absolutely correct. And guess what? The where function written by Microsoft is exactly built like that. We, will, we, we have a dedicated session only on link and so on. We will talk a lot about link when you come to entity framework. But currently, I want to describe how you build such stuff. Okay? So I don't want to use the pre-built functions because that would be trivial. Now we want to understand how it is made. Do you get the idea? Are you ready for another step, another level? Take a look at this method here. Any ideas how we could simplify this method? Have you ever heard of the type I enumerable? It's not an exam, I just want to find out what you already know. You know what I enumerable is? What is I enumerable? Yeah? It's an object 
object that is able to be iterated on? Uh, it's not an object, but an interface. Yeah. Everything yeah. else is OK. Yeah. If, it, if an object implements it, it's iterated. Yeah, iteration means forward only, read only. You cannot add something to an I enumerable. And you can only go forward, next, 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 next. You cannot say next, 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 previous, 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 next, next. You cannot go uh, uh, forward and backward. It's just forward only and it's read only. Question, do we manipulate the heroes, this one, inside our filter function? Do we add heroes here? Nope. Do we delete heroes here? Nope. So is it read only? Yes. Is it forward only, or do we go forward and back and forward and back? For each is just forward only. So what we could do is we could switch here from list to I enumerable. That means that we can handle anything that is a forward only, read only collection. It doesn't matter if it's list of heroes or hero array or anything. As long as it contains an iterable collection of heroes, everything is fine. Same is true for the result. We can switch to I enumerable here. Exactly the same. Got it? Nice. So if you write a function which gets a collection and this collection will not be manipulated, but you just read from it. Remember, I enumerable. That's the type you should use. For those of you who want to know the details, if you take a look at the list class in Visual Studio, F12, go to definition, you will see that the list class implements I enumerable. So that's fine. I enumerable will become super, super important when we talk about database access, entity framework, and so on. Any additional ideas how we could simplify this block of code? Again, no exam. I just want to find out what you already know about C Sharp. Idea? Yeah? Maybe could use link. Yeah, we could, but I don't want to use. Uh, imagine that there is no link. Link has not been invented yet. It will come later in this year, okay? But just this code, very simple. Have you ever heard about the yield keyword? Yield. English, uh, uh, if you wörtlich übersetzt ernten, yield. No? And I can show you something, something new. Yield is not a new function. Yield is very, very old. It exists until the, uh, it, it exists, it has been existing since I think version 1.1 of, of .NET, so 15 years or more. But unfortunately, many people don't use it, but it makes your code much more readable and much more efficient. What you can do with the yield statement is the following. Please take a look at the video beamer and then do the same. Remove the result list, remove the return statement, remove the add statement and replace it with yield return. Done. Isn't that nice? Yield is a keyword that works in any function that returns an I enumerable. What you essentially say to Visual Studio and C Sharp is I want to yield another element and return it to the caller. Ernten. Just like going through your garden, find a tomato, take the tomato, put it in the basket. Yield. Yield the tomato. The next one. The next one. The next one. Get the idea? You don't need to create a separate list. For those of you who really want to, who have the uh, the motivation to get really good programmers, you should immediately see what what that brings us. We don't need... Ah, hello. Kein Problem. Ja, selbstverständlich, bitte. Bitte sehr. Ja, ich bin einer von den 22 Ja, genau, das bin ich. 
Das sind ja recht, das wisst ihr, dass das eine recht eine Choreografie ist. Ja, ja. schon. Ja, schau. Ich habe mir vom Professor Kirk schon gehört, dass man ziemlich das Glück mit Ja. Ja, genau. Jetzt will ich rot, ein paar größere Masken. Das haben wir recht gut. Ja, super, ausgezeichnet, ausgezeichnet. Hervorragend, hervorragend. Das ist ein Ja, absolut, ich kann nichts sagen. Nur Lob. Und was es gibt, da zum Genau. <lacht> Tschüss. Okay, so. Well, well, yield, yeah. You should immediately see what the advantage is here. We don't need a list. Yeah. There are a lot of details we could talk about yield, how it internally works and so on, but I will not go into the details because this is not our core uh, topic here. Now, next step. Take a look at this method. Take a look at this code. The code that is currently highlighted, it, does it really depend on heroes? Imagine that we would not maintain a list of heroes, but a list of persons, people, sorry. A list of persons, people. A list of customers, a list of orders. Would the code look anything different if we would have the, the highlighted code now, if we would have another data structure? No, nope. doesn't matter. So what can we do? We can make it more Generic, exactly. So we can turn it into a generic. How do, I can, how do I turn it into a generic? Well, we give it a type parameter, T. The type parameter is used here, T. The type parameter is used here, T. The filter stuff here. We would also need a type parameter, t. The type parameter is used here, t. Wherever you find hero, replace it with t and give it the type parameter here in the filter. Wherever we find hero, we just give it the type parameter and suddenly the code still works. See it here? Exactly the same as before, but now we have written not filter heroes, but a very generic filter method. It can filter anything. It can be used in Cinderella to guide uh, pigeons. It is no longer heroes anymore because we can filter anything. So let's rename that guy. Let's call it items, this one. This is no longer a hero. Let's call it item. And now we have a really powerful method which can filter anything. And those of you who suggested link the where clause, guess what? We have just implemented the link where clause. This is link. This is how it works. This is how Microsoft built it. Understand what I mean? It's just built on generics and delegates. So now I can see it here, ch -ch 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 -ch, fix that, and it works. And now really this filter method, um, let me write a little bit of code. You don't need to follow along because it's, it's just a repetition of what we already said, but I want to demonstrate how powerful this stuff is. We can now for instance say, please filter an array of strings. Oops, sorry, <laughs> new keyboard. Um, Homelander, the deep, Stormfront, that's fine. And now we can add here a filter. This filter says hero name goes to hero name, not GC, ah, new keyboard. Hero name starts with Let's say H. And as you can see, suddenly we have a filter method which can be run on a collection of strings. It's exactly the same code. Take a look at this code down here. This is now a collection of strings. So T 
becomes of type string. Therefore, the filter takes a string. Therefore, we can apply a string method. Get it? Or filter new array numbers. One, two, three, four, five. And n, you can call it anything, n modulo 2 equals 0. That will give us all even numbers, alle geraden Zahlen. Works. This is now a lambda function. This is a lambda function. We apply it to a generic delegate and we have programmed a generic filter method. Now, I'm sure that some of you, those of you who are passionate coders, understand what I just did, and you could probably, if you take a little bit of time, recap it on your own. Some of you who maybe are more into other things and coding is something that you have to do in this school, but it's not your passion, don't worry. In the exams, in this course, you will not need to write code like that. It's not necessary. But in this, co in this course, we will take a look at things like entity framework, accessing a database and things like that. So we will use libraries which are built exactly like that. And we will need to understand how these libraries work. We will need to read the documentation and understand what we see there. So it's absolutely sufficient at this point in the course that you now understood the concept. It is not necessary that you are able to write code like this, syntactically correct, on your own. That's not necessary. Okay? Maybe in the fifth class, maybe you can dive in deeper. But those of you who want to be really good developers, at one point in your career, you should be able to write that like nothing. Good, question. I have good news for you. If we want, we can delete a little bit of code because this, Microsoft has written it for us. We don't need this delegate. And this will be probably, yes, probably one of the last things that we do today. There is a predefined delegate which is called Funk, and this funk works like this. Funk takes the first type parameter as the input parameter and the last type parameter as the return value. So our filter function takes anything of type T, a hero, a string, an integer, and returns a boolean whether we want to keep this item or not. So func of t and boolean is the same as our filter delegate down here. So we don't need the filter delegate. If we take a look, I think somebody asked, I think it was you, right? Whether this is a delegate, guess what? If I say alt F12, see it? Call. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It is a delegate. You don't just call it a delegate, it is a delegate. You see it here? It's just a delegate. Nothing special. The Microsoft guys at Redmond's, they, they did nothing special here. They just created this delegate. To be honest, there are many, many delegates like that because there is a delegate with just one type parameter, two type parameters, three type parameters, four type parameters, and so on. So they, they, they have built, I think, 18 different versions of it. I think it's 18. Huh? I think it's 18. 18, yeah, I think so. Okay, so with that, we can, oh, let's not delete it. Let's just comment it out here. Understand what I mean here? We will talk about funks a little bit more. And this here, the filter method in link would be, would be called where, but you don't need to remember that now 
we will talk about link in very much details in a few weeks. So that wasn't easy, was it? But I hope by developing this step by step by step, by coming from, let's recap it in our minds, okay? We were coming from a very specific methods, heroes who can fly, where we had to copy a lot of code in order to get a heroes whose last name is empty. Then we applied generics to put it together, to build a generic where function. Then we applied the lambda function. And finally, we renamed a little bit of thing and use, use yield to make it more, more uh, nicely looking, but that's not the, the core point. Any questions so far? I'll take a sip of water so you have time to think about questions. the remaining time in talking about this funk stuff and so on because we will see it very very often. Let's do that by creating another console app file new project console app and this time funk action. These are the two types that we are going to talk about in the next few minutes. Now you know the drill. Open the csproj file, change it to net 5.0, add the lang version preview. I will keep it on the screen for a second so you can change these two settings. Everything fine? I'll wait for another few moments. Good? Good. Nice. And you know the drill. Delete everything except the using system. Goodbye. <clears throat> nice. Let's write a very, very simple function. Static void count to in nearly infinity, something like this. And then we say for var i equals zero, i lower than, I will try 10 million, something like this. What does it do? Nothing. It burns CPU time. It just counts from zero to 10 million. I'm not sure how long it takes on my computer. You can try it um, on your computer. Um, I will try it. Okay, maybe I can add, maybe I can say 50 million. It should take a few seconds. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe I can even go to 100 million. Yeah, that takes a second or so on my computer. Please find a value that takes one or two seconds on your computer. Mm -hmm. 
very simple code. Of course, in practice, you would never write code like that. But imagine we are doing something meaningful here. We are calculating the number pi or calculating anything. We are rendering, ray tracing stuff, whatever. We are just burning CPU or GPU time. Does it work? Good. Now I want to know how long this method takes. One possibility is to use a C-sharp stopwatch. Var watch new stopwatch. Stopwatch is available in system.diagnostics. We can make it even more elegant by saying stopwatch.start new. That will give us a stopwatch that is immediately started. Stopuhr, okay? After we count it, we just say watch.stop. That stops our watch. And then we say console write line watch dot elapsed and that should give us an indication how long our method took. If I run it on my computer it's 0 0.21 seconds. That's too short. I will increase it by another magnitude by another power of 10. And now it takes two seconds. Yeah, I like that. So it should look like this on your computers. You should see something like this. I don't care if it's a second or two seconds or three seconds, something like this. Do we have any questions regarding this code? I guess not. Do we? No. Did you know stopwatch? No? Uh, by the way, in practice, for those of you who really want to become super experienced developers, don't use stopwatch to find out whether your algorithms are really good and if you want to do performance measurement, benchmarking, there is a separate project which is called benchmark.net. This is what you should look at. We did not cover it in this course, but if you want to optimize your C-sharp code really tightly, then take a look at benchmark.net. Don't use stopwatch. But for our demo here, for learning lambdas, it's perfect. Now, my exercise that I would like to complete with you together in the last few minutes of this course lesson, I would like to take a look at these four lines and make them more generic. In my case here, I have here method to benchmark. This is the method that we would like to test. But I would like to have a more generic way of testing any kind of function. In another application, I might want to stop and, and print the, the runtime of a database access, of a web API access. Understand what I mean? So this line here should be a parameter. So, Let's write static, I don't know what the result will be, measure time, I don't know what the parameters will be, and what I want to have is something like this, but here I would like to call something depending on what I want to do. So, help me. Do you, do you get the idea? You get the idea what we want to do? Yeah? Okay, good. So, help me. What is the return type of measure time? What does it return? No. Do you see any return statement in this method, in this code? It prints it, exactly. So, what is the return type? Exactly. What is the parameter here? We 
which function? What should I write? It's an action, exactly. I, action is correct. Please don't follow along. I will develop it step by step. It's a delegate, delegate, that returns nothing and takes no parameters. Take a look at count to nearly infinity. Returns nothing, takes no parameters. And this thing, this delegate void something does already exist and in C-sharp terms it's called an action. Take a look. If I take a look at action, see? Void, no parameters. That's exactly what we want to have. That is called an action. Good. So what do I have to write here? idea? Now I can change my code up here and say measure time, use a lambda function and say count to nearly infinity. And now it should run two times. One. But now I have a really nice method here, which can be reused. And this is what action is all about. Question so far. So we have learned what a function is. It returns something. And we have learned what an action is. It returns nothing. Its return type is void. Does it work on your computers? Do you understand it, what we just did? It's a really nice application of a lambda function, or in this case, a delegate. Good. Nice. Let's build on that example and talk about functions again. Let's write a static int calculate some result. What I will do I will just simulate some interesting calculation and return an arbitrary number. Of course, this method, as you can see it here, doesn't make any sense. It's just burning CPU time and then always returns 42. But you have to use your imagination here. Yeah? In this code, you might do some really nice calculation. Yeah, some some um, revenue calculation in the business area or maybe some physics calculation in a game or whatever. The, the point is we are not going to write any algorith algorithm here. We are just simulating code, runtime, and then returning a result. Got it? Now, I would like to have a method, a, a variant of measure time, where I can write the following. Console write line, the result is measure time, calculate some result. 
Um, let me make it a little bit larger. Yes. Are you familiar with that, with that syntax? Yes? Anybody not familiar with this syntax? It just prints out this stuff inside of this string. So I need to have a variant of measure time where this one is no longer an action returning void, but this one is now something which returns an integer and measure time should pass back, should give back the result of the called function. So we would say something like measure time f function. What is the correct type here? It is no longer, again, I, I know it's difficult and it's already th been three, three hours, so please try to stay with me. We are nearly at the end. We already see the finish line of today's lesson. Action was no parameters returning void. What did we have that returns something? Not an action, but... Huh? A delegate. a delegate, yes, but we had before a delegate that Microsoft gave us. Can you remember with the, with the uh, pigeons, with the Tauben and Cinderella and the hatten wir die... Yeah, a funk, exactly. We can use a funk and funk takes an input parameter and I told you the last input parameter, type parameter of funk is the return type. So what we can say is we can say funk of int. Get it? This time we get a function which returns an integer. Now, if we take that code again, we're nearly done. We can copy it down here. It's just for demo purposes. We can say var result equals f. And at the end, we say return result. So, and of course, here, integer. What's the problem? Uh, measure time funk. I need to change the name. So I give you a second to change the code. Do you understand it? This function now returns an integer. Therefore, up here, we didn't process the result. It was void. Here, we store the result. And we return the result. And now I can simply change up that up here. And it should work. If I try that, we should see two seconds, another two seconds, another two seconds, and the result is 42. Whoa! This is exactly what I wanted to have. What you have to remember from this course, and that is really, really important. Listen to me, we will not write any code for the remaining time that we have. Remember action. It is something that returns nothing, void. Funk returns something. And you give it the type parameter to tell it what it returns. Action and funk, you will hear me using that over and over and over again. You can find it in Entity Framework, in Link, in all the modern libraries. They will use funks and actions all over the place. You have to be, you have to be uh, familiar with this Lambda syntax because again, it is used over and over and over again. Any questions so far? Good. So with that, let's quickly recap what we have done today. We have repeated what a delegate is. 
a delegate is a type for a function. Then we have step by step developed the idea of lambda, lambda functions from anonymous delegates towards um, simple lambda functions and we have then built a little more complicated lambda functions. We have taken a look at generics and then we have done a little bit of exercising. Hopefully you have also seen a bunch of C-sharp features which you weren't aware of. Maybe you have learned a little bit about that. Until next week, you have a homework which is super important. It's the recap of basic C-sharp features and I expect everybody to hand in the video in time because you will need to watch the videos and we will have probably at least a small multiple choice test about this basic C-sharp features. It will not be difficult. If you take a look at the videos, I will make sure the answers are in there. Don't be afraid of that. It will be something very short. I just need some points and some grades from you in order to give you a grade at the end of the year. Okay? It will not be difficult if you take a look at the videos and if you created a video on your own. Do we have any questions regarding the Flipgrid homework which is due to next week? 